Atira tēnā tātou. I te tūtei ngā te whātua, koe nei tākou i tautoko ana i ngā mihi, ko tūko nei e koe, engari kei te mihi ki a koe, kia koutou rā nō koutou kei te whenua, nō koutou kei te moana, engari huri nō ki ngā kārangaranga iwi o tāmaki makaurau, nō roto mai anō i te rohe o te wako tainu, a nei a te wako tainu i mihi kawatua nō kia koutou. Mi te tautoko i e rau ngā whakāro ki te rungo rawa tainu ki te kiengi, kare kāwhere ki whānui tonu pai māri. Engari huri noa kia rātou ko riro atu i pērā tonu i te wai paunamu, engari ngā mate kai rongi a tātou haere. Ki a koe kei te rangatira nei ka mihi atu ki a koe tai noa ki i tāo kaimahi ki tō taha, engari huri noa ki ngā kaimahi katoa, tēnā koutou katoa. You'll be pleased to know there'll be experts following my conversation. I just want to echo the greetings from Ngāti Whātou and acknowledge the home people, acknowledge also the prayer that was given up wherever you come from in that perspective, and uh, echoing the Minister's thoughts for those in the South Island, and indeed many of us have families that are bereaved and acknowledge them. Uh, Recognising too Martin and the staff from MPI who, uh, who do a wonderful job in having put this together. So you can read my profile there, and uh, really uh, I guess I was the last one to duck, so I got this uh, slot. Oh, shall I have a presentation? been given instructions on how to operate this, so it would be my test. So that's a bit about me, where I'm from. <clears throat> and uh, I guess uh, from a, a, I've been asked to provide a Māori perspective, and you'll see the photos here that, that are familiar to you. In the middle here is a photo that's familiar to me. And that's one of the areas that I'm from with Maunga Tautari. And so you'll be aware of the ecological island fence, and that's a biosecurity uh, endeavour in action. And that's really important to our whole community, Māori Community Council and, and government, to support endeavours such as this. And Minister Barry has been there and, and uh, is supportive of that endeavour. There's a bit about my background. I spent 13 years working in, in the space. I, I'm not a biosecurity expert by any means, but working in the space of facilitating relationships within the natural resources sector. And my good friend Roger can uh, read my profile out uh, later on. But the, the focus, uh, the, uh, the area that I focus on is what is best practice in the space of Māori engagement so that there can be productive relationships. Many documents like Biosecurity 2025 have statements relating to Māori, engari mutu whakatinana, how do we give effect to those in a way that actually makes a difference both to, state, to documents such as this, but any other strategies or discussion documents or direction statements that you in your industries may care to deal with. So in terms of practical biosecurity issues, some of the things that I've been involved in is the Cody dieback, uh, working on, on developing a Māori perspective in the future of uh, peace management plan of action, and then of course the uh, biosecurity 2025, and looking at that, I was asked to go around the country and facilitate a series of hui investigating the feasibility around a, a Māori biosecurity network. One of the challenges that you guys have in this industry is there's no Māori ink to relate with, as opposed to there could be a, an industry, kiwi fruit growers or whatever, fisheries or whatever. So looking at some way to address that. Uh, uh, my disclaimer is that there, this is a Māori perspective. There's no such thing as the Māori pers perspective here. The only perspective that matters is Ngāti Whātua's perspective. You know, where I come from, it's my perspective or my people's perspective. Where Glen has come from, it's Te Atiawa and some other tribes in the top of the south. There's a couple of other tribes on top of the south. We all have different perspectives, but I guess it is kind of like NZ Inc. I, I also chair uh, the EPA's Māori Advisory Committee. Uh, following on in the big uh, space left when Glenis uh, retired and the you know natural resources sector trying to get the natural resources sector under a government mandate to work together well minister you yourself will know how difficult that can be because you've got all got your own drivers and different areas of focus so there's no NZ Inc even though we've talked finally of it there is no Māori Inc either <coughs> so I've been asked to look at the, what the connections are between the biosecurity system and Māori, how it aligns with Māori values. You'll see that with a couple of differences, uh, Māori are no different to yourselves. Right? And I'll explore some of those. 
But really, this will be just a talk fest in case, uh, if, we, if I don't leave you with something of a challenge. So I apologise in advance if any, any of you have your feathers ruffled as a result. Uh, but I hope some of you do. All right. I, I don't have a mandate from anybody to speak at the moment. It's really just because I, my role within Biosecurity 2025 was to facilitate the, the focus group that provided perspectives into the document. I guess it was just an opportunity that I was in all of those meetings to provide that perspective. Okay, Tupai? All good? It's Māori for all good. Okay. Okay. So, in terms of the connections that. Um, that we have, that Māori and, and, and we all may have with respect to biosecurity. First is Te Tiriti and its principles. Now we go on about that, but whether it's a treaty, Te Tiriti or the principles thereof, that impose certain obligations, roles and responsibilities on the Crown, on hapu or Māori sub-tribes, and also on Crown, those with Crown delegated responsibilities. Now we know that local authorities, for example, councils, they're not the Crown but they exist because of the Crown. So the Waitangi Tribunal has uh, stated that the, the <coughs> Crown cannot abdicate its responsibilities by delegating its functions. So those treaty responsibilities transfer in some way. This isn't a treaty workshop, but just to say that those are some of the connections that join us. The second is, of course, with the emerging treaty settlements. Uh, someone once told me that uh, tribes tend to burn their treaty settlement credits to negotiate advances in uh, Kaitiakitanga or the resource management space. I use as an example of Waikato River kind of management legislation. It's weird, weird. It was like we need it, we, we need, we want a greater say, and that'll be part of our treaty settlement negotiations. You are also Māori have quadruple bottom line drivers, quadruple bottom line aspirations, and therefore the accompanying tensions. How can you protect Wahi Tapu? and other places, you know, sites of significance when you want to build a huge inland port. How do you manage those tensions? So, not dissimilar to yourselves within your various industries. As co the added, I, I guess the added uh, responsibility or burden that Māori face is that, that sense of responsibility as kaitiaki that comes from the role of being mana whenua and tangata whenua. Words that are bandied around often, but really the, the customary authority that exists through long-term occupation, through conquest, or the various mechanisms by which a tribe can become mana whenua. That carries with it certain responsibilities. And the challenge, of course, is that the only place that Māori can be mana whenua is within their ohi. I can't now go to Australia and still be mana whenua in Australia. And so that brings with it a certain, uh, I guess, a, an obligation in terms of to the region and to those that are within the region. So within my tribe, we have a sense of obligation to whoever else is within that region, whether that be community members, council, government, and so on. So we only have one place in which we can call home. Obviously through genealogy, we have multiple places, but you know we have places that we're from. So those are some of the connections. I'd like to draw on in terms of what the Māori perspective is with uh, in relation to biosecurity. The, when Biosecurity 2025 was mooted, the, the, I mean, to me, this is, a, this is an, an issue, and Julie and I have spoken about this, that this is an issue of significance to climate change, but there wasn't the climate change budget to develop this um, discussion document. So do we have a couple of hui throughout the country and invite Māori that are available to come along? And what we found, found was, let's put out an expression of interest across the country those that, uh, formed, that were interested uh, from a Māori perspective formed a coalition of the willing and uh, facilitated that. In order to input into Biosecurity 2025, the group started out in 2055 and I just want to speak to some of the things that they thought were important. You will hopefully resonate and recognise many of them. One was that in, the, in 2020, 2055 the group would like to see Aotearoa being a place where quadruple bottom line values are recognised in respect of the environment. Nothing new there, right? Kabai? Okay. Three people agree. We'll go, we'll, we'll take that as, a, as support. <laughs> it's a place where Indigenous biodiversity thrives and is free from harmful pests okay. and diseases. And that's due in part to the, so we're talking about biodiversity there, but it's due in part to the world class biosecurity system that we have. That's what contributes to that outcome. 
The leadership and government in governance of their system is clearly defined roles, responsibilities and effective resource allocation. You recognise that in the document itself. <clears throat> and that we tend to have that we continue to have that multi layered <coughs> uh, system. You've seen that lovely coloured rainbow diagram which uh, didn't make this document for some reason, but there you go. It took me a while to understand I might add, but once I did it was fantastic. Each of those layers is, is about being joined and collaborative between all of the players, all of the players in the system, both Māori communities, science and so on and so forth. And from a science perspective, of course, I'll come to that. Well, the next point looks on that. It's, it's looking at all of the knowledge systems that are available to us in the biosecurity response. I'll come to it later on, but I'd like to make the point now that those that are active kaitiaki or guardians of the environment that are actually using the environment, they tend to have a greater awareness of the sensitivities of the indigenous environment. And so they can see, oh, there's something going on here with eels or piero or coda. So therefore we need to look at that. And sometimes they're discovered, possibly before other knowledge systems, other scientists may have been aware of those issues, but it's not weighted. So the whole Māori knowledge space is still under challenge in terms of how we get that to have the, to speak to other systems. And then on to the Crown Māori relationship, obviously we, we, we continue to encourage that collaborative approach, uh, particularly as it relates, relates in this context to biosecurity, and then full partnership between Māori and the Crown is recognised and gives expression to Te Tiriti o Waitangi, words that are easy to say but a little less difficult to give effect to. And as I said, that is easier said than done. You know, 2055, that vision, I mean, who in industry wouldn't like that? Who in, who in the community wouldn't like that outcome? Who in uh, Māori, who in council, government wouldn't like that? You know, hugely expensive to have any incursion that affects our way of life as New Zealanders. There are recognised, this came through in the future of uh, pest management and also in the 2003 strategy that there are capacity and capability issues on all sides of the conversation and that's uh, to see how Māori can effectively be involved in, and efficiently involved in biosecurity. Now, it's not my place to speak for industry and so on and so forth, there'll be other uh, people later in the day that will talk to that, but certainly how Māori can be productively involved, that, you know, we can have those words in the document, but when the next iteration of this comes out in maybe another 10 years or whatever, what's going to be our measures that have said, yeah, we made a difference. So I refer you to uh, page six of Biosecurity 2025, where one of the principles were the role of Tangata Whenua as kaitiaki and Mātauranga Māori are recognised and provided for. Okay, easy to say, but difficult to give effect to. And then on page 11, uh, one of the goals in terms of that biosecurity team of 4.7 million is Māori participation, uh, recognising Māori values, capability and recognition. Much is made of the sleeping giant of the Māori economy. Now, at a local level, we have a view on that and how, how difficult that is to... One, one view is a giant's already awake, we just need to get moving. The other view is, you know, how do we wake it and, and do that? But we can't do that without the efforts of documents such as these, and so I acknowledge the team that worked on this to make sure, make sure it was there. Our challenge is to make a difference in doing that. Just uh, that photo on your left, I'll come back to that in a moment, that's important to me. But it really is important, a bit of a challenge to you guys and, and, uh, and so, you know, what, so what? We can have this document here, but so what? I'm sure the Minister will take a dim view uh, if this, is, this does become a bookend on somebody's shelf, right? So in terms of the next steps, it is at, at all levels of the biosecurity system is proactive consideration of Māori involvement and Māori perspectives. What is the place of Māori knowledge systems in biosecurity? And uh, in many fora that I work in at, at council and certainly in central government, it is actually giving that wheels, giving that legs, you know, it's, it's something that's like, okay, what is the contribution that Mātauranga Māori makes beyond just writing it and saying that's nice, then we have karakia, we talk about Māori, we talk about mana and then we move on. It needs to be richer than that, richer conversation. That's, but we all need to be prepared to step into that Māori as well. 
and I've talked about the sensitivity of active kaitiaki and the case studies of how Māori in my view have been effectively involved and I only quote them because I, I have been involved is that the EPA for example does have it's easier because it's in statute that there is a Māori advisory committee but the EPA has gone a step further and set up an active non-statutory network of kaitiaki and that's been going for many years now, over 10 years and, and has, we've seen the capability of Māori Inc as it exists grow as a result of, of uh, efforts such as this. Yes it takes investment but far better that investment that the costs that's associated with Māori are submitting against activities in the natural resources sector largely through not understanding what the issues are. The other thing is Cody Dieback, and uh, there's a Tangata Whenua Rōpū being set up as a result of that, of, of working with mana whenua and with agencies to set up something. Now, that has, that comes, uh, ebbs and flows in terms of how effective that group works, but at least it's there and there's that mechanism there for uh, the, those affected by Cody Dieback to be involved in the conversation. On a, on a more planning level, uh, there's a, a, a council uh, growth strategy that I was involved in that has follows a similar pattern. No time to go into those case studies today, but my details on the last slide is anybody is of a mood to shout me a coffee sometime and talk about it further. <laughs> One of the, the, the next steps that, that did come through the Māori focus group is, is how Māori are represented at, at GIA or could or should Māori be represented at GIA. I'm not advocating one way or the other, I don't, I don't know, but I think there should be a specific response there um, there was some unthought mooted that the Crown as a treaty partner is potentially could represent the Māori voice on GIA. Uh, just to say it, uh, that's not supported. All right. So, so to, to question how Māori could be participate in that, given that there's no Māori Inc, given that there's no body of, of technical experts that are paid by that group to represent the Māori view, and yet I understand that industry comes with uh, you know, pays to participate in these groups. I would like to suggest. I wouldn't like to suggest a levy be uh, put on members to support Māori involvement, but who knows? I won't. I, I dare not suggest that. Anyway, something else that came out of the uh, facilitated national hui on on uh, testing the feasibility of interest in a Māori biosecurity network is one. Māori are busy in their home areas. Very. Uh, it, but they're very, very interested and recognise how important uh, biosecurity is. Often, though, not until it comes to them. So there is some some validity, I guess, there's a case to be made for setting up a Māori biosecurity network. And in fact, three leaders in our, in our community in this space, Amanda, Melanie and Nick, have put some effort. Many of you guys will know them. They're great, great people. And in fact, they won an award uh, the Dave Galloway Innovation Award for this effort put in there, but that's in its infancy. So that could be a solution that then helps to get meaningful involvement in Māori in your space. Hey, Fokaroaro, something for you to consider. Nick will be here tomorrow, by the way. I'm not sure if Mel's in the room. Amanda's just had a baby, but uh, so if, if Nick's here, hit him up about it. He'll be able to, to shed some light. So just in concluding, uh, hopefully you've seen through this, Māori do have similar as biosecurity aspirations, but also additional biosecurity responsibilities and obligations as a result of being mana whenua within the, within the area. There's nowhere else to hold the head up for me. Nō Ngāti Kōroki Kahukura, Nō Ngāti Apakura, Nō Ngāti Tūratu I can't say that unless I actually stand on that land and take some responsibility for what happens there. So. There's a, there are those additional responsibilities and obviously desire to be meaningfully involved with that. And I use the, uh, the example that we have at home of the Mangatota, the Ecological Island Fence. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful project. Actually driven and started from the community, not from us as, as, a, as a home people. But, you know, our people have given land. Most of the Māori land remaining within our region, Māori owned land within our region, is within that Ecological Island Fence. So that, it's a huge donation, if you like, and, and even through the treaty settlement process, negotiating specific redress that would enable something to be done that re retains integrity of that project. Uh, I, I, I want to suggest to you that Māori do have value to contribute. Uh, 
uh, that'll be something that, needs, that does need to be tested and that's a two-way conversation where we actually have the courage to challenge each other about that, dispense with the PC that goes on. We can't say too many stuff in case we upset the Brown brothers, you know. We need to, that, that was a joke, you can laugh at me. <laughs> okay, cool. But there are multiple solutions right now. There's sort of things that we can test and something that, that I don't think has been, uh, that we really need to address is is uh, the two-way capacity and capability building that needs to occur in order for that meaningful conversation to occur. It needs to go beyond political drivers and it's great to see this statement out to, to 2025 and let's hope it does go beyond that. I guess leaving you with this and I refer you to the inside page of uh, the page number one actually where it talks about matauraurau, um, matakurauru, kaura tiwi. So with all of our contributions, and just borrowing from that, with all of our contributions, Aotearoa will prosper. And the challenge that's at the bottom of that says, uh, please read and reflect on how to give effect to the proverb with your contribution, my contribution, the people will flourish so as to care for those things that are precious to us. In 2025, those are my four grandchildren there. In 2025 and even in 2055, they'll be standing here and let's hope that they're not scathing of this meeting today and the efforts that we've put in between now and 2025 and certainly into 2055 so that they can see that we, as a community, have given effect to uh, that whakatauki or that proverb. Nō reira, huri noi te whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora.